Sup guys, I'm going to be teaching you how to fly like Flappy Bird using CV2. If you guys aren't all interested in how the circuitry works for being Flappy Bird, then skip to the timestamp that you see on screen now. But if you do want to know how it works, stick along. Another thing I want to mention is you can pause the video at any time if I'm going too fast. Enjoy. Now, first things first, you want to enable CV2 so you can access it. All you do is you go to your watch, click on this room, settings, general setup, and go to the second page and tick allow creative tools beta content and then click apply. Now, when you do this, you won't be able to make inventions in your room, so you won't be able to save your Flappy Bird circuitry that you made. That's fine save. Alright, so what you want to do now is you want to look in your Mega Pen, click Open Padlet, and then click the search bar. Now, I'm going to be up against the wall so I can put chips up against it. So you want to look up Git Local Player. There it is. Spawn that in. What this essentially does, it gets the ID of every player in the room and outputs it there. So, we're gonna use that. Go player. Hand. Should be player left hand velocity. And player right hand velocity. Make sure you get velocity and not position or finger direction because that'll impact you in the future if you don't so just wire this up just like that and vector that's basically the um, velocity or yeah now what we want to get is a vector split there it is we're gonna get two of them And wire that up as well. Now, we were going to focus on the Y vector, which, if you don't know, is up and down. So we're going to get an add. Just one of them. Place that. Wire. The Y. Make sure you wire the Y. And we're also going to need a greater or equal greater than also works but greater or equal is better because just is make sure you wire the sum to a because if it's the second number then it won't work and you want to configure that to 10 there you go any number works but 10 works best for this now you want to get an if. There you go. And wire that, wire this to the condition. And now we're gonna need a event receiver. And wire that to the if. And we want to configure this to update 30 hertz. What that does, it outputs a execution every 30 hertz, so it's always active. Then, we're going to need an impulse add. Impulse add works the best for this specific thing. Wire the then to add impulse. And object is the player or object. We'll just wire that back to get local player. And direction. We want to go up, so we need a vector create. Put that there. That's fine. Wire that to direction and configure the y to one. There we go. Now it works. So if I do this, I go up.
Now there's also a couple things that you can change if you'd like. So I went over this before, the greater or equal. You can configure this to whatever number you want. Or you can make it too low. So if I make it one, for example, I barely move my hand and it triggers. So we obviously don't want that. I'm gonna have to move slowly. like super hot there we go back to 10. 10 works best because it's kind of like an in-between and it works for a lot of people and the speed that's basically how far up you go so if I change it to two I go pretty high but not as high as I want to go so, let's say I make it 8, that's pretty high, and do that, I go really high. But the thing is, you want to have the max impulse always higher than your speed. So let's say I set this to no 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 no, it'll still go 8, because the max impulse is 8. So that won't work. I'm just gonna change this back to five for now. There you go. Floppy bird. Thank you guys for watching this video. If you enjoyed, make sure to like, subscribe, and leave a comment if you'd like. And I'll see you guys next time.